What's up YouTube? This is Dennis Panyuta for tutorials.eu slash Unity. In this video, you are going to learn how the Unity user interface works and what the different parts of it do for you because it can be quite overwhelming as a beginner. There's a lot of things going on at the same time. So this will be an overview for you that will help you to get started. And this is just a small part of the entire course that we are uploading here. So definitely check out the playlist up here and also hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't done so already. So let's get started with the content. So first thing that we will see is that we have a bunch of different options here, a bunch of different icons, areas, buttons and so forth. I'm going to start at the bottom here. So where we have the project folder. So this is the project tab in which you see your project items. Here you have your favorites, which in our case will be empty because we have no favorites yet. We have all of the materials, all models and all prefabs. And we're going to see later on what those are. So what a model is, what a prefab is and what materials are as well. But then we have assets and in the assets folder, that's where we have something. In the assets folder, we have our scenes as well as our new behavior script, which we created last video in order to test if Visual Studio is connected to Unity properly. So inside of this assets folder, that's where we are going to put all of the items that we have in our game. This includes sounds, graphics, but of course also the logic, which means the code and all of that. So there will be every single item that is going to appear inside of our game will be inside of assets. So inside of the assets folder, you see there is another folder which is called scenes. So in the scenes folder, that's where you have your scenes. Well, who would have guessed it? And scenes are basically like levels. So you see there is a sample scene by default and it is open already. So here you can see we are in the sample scene in this case. So you can double click on it and it will open the scene that was open already, but it will basically reload it, so to speak. Okay, so here we are reloading our sample scene and we're going to look over what's up in the hierarchy in a second. But before we do that, let's look at the assets here once again. So we have our scenes folder and we have our behavior script, which is our code. And we can have multiple scripts, which we will do later on. But for the beginning, we're going to focus on Unity entirely for the first couple of hours. And then we have this packages folder in which we have all of the different packages which Unity imported automatically for us. So you can, you can drag this little slider here at the bottom towards the left. This will then display the different folders in a more readable format in my eyes. So here you can see that the custom end unit was added, JetBrains, Rider, Editor, Test Framework, and so forth. So a bunch of folders which basically allow us to very quickly build a game without having to think about too much. So here, a lot of stuff is happening. A lot of code is prepared for us and so forth. And this is amazing because we don't have to take care of any of that. We can just go ahead and start building our games. So these packages basically enable us to do all of that. So then let's look at our hierarchy here, because as I said, inside of the sample scene, you can see the hierarchy. So the hierarchy is basically displaying all of the items that are in your current scene. And as I stated, a scene is basically like a level in your game. So you can have multiple scenes and each scene would then have its own level and you could move between the different levels by changing the scene. And each scene would have its own hierarchy. Okay, in our case, the sample scene, which is the default scene, has two items. It has a main camera and the directional light. So when you click on them, you can see that something on the right hand side happens. So the inspector suddenly appears. This inspector displays the details about this main camera. Now this main camera is a game object. Every single item that is inside of the sample scene is going to be a game object. So our main camera is a game object. The directional light is a game object. And every single game object has a bunch of components. So it can either be just one component or it can be many components, but it has always to be at least this transform component. So as you can see, the directional light has this transform component. The main camera also has this transform component. The transform component just has information about the position of the item inside of the world 
as well as the rotation of the game object, so the item, and the scale, so how big is this game object. And why is it called game object? Well, because it's an object inside of our game. And the main camera is the item that is going to be the camera that the player can see. So you can have multiple cameras in the game, but the main camera is the one that the game starts with. And if you only have one camera, it's easy. As soon as you have multiple cameras, the game gets a little more complicated and you have to add logic to as to which camera will the user see at which given point. So the main camera could be, for example, when you have a driving game, could be the camera of the driver, but then you have a second camera which could, which could be called rare camera and it would display the rare view so you can see what's happening behind the driver, for example. You can rename an item inside of your scene at any point. You can just click on it and then change the name or you can right click on it, click on rename or alternatively, you can click on it and change it in the inspector here as well. So I could change this to my camera, for example, and this would then change on both hand sides. So here on the simple scene side, as well as in the inspector. You can now see that there is a little star that appeared here in the sample scene. This means that there were changes made to the sample scene. And if I don't save them, the changes will be lost. So let me reload the sample scene, for example. And you can see it says scene has been modified. If I don't save my changes, you see it will reload the sample scene and my changes to my main camera are suddenly gone. So be sure to always save your scene before closing your application or in general, save your scene as often as possible, because if you don't do it and you made a bunch of changes and you created new items and you didn't create them and store them safely as assets, as we will see later how to do that, then your work will be lost. So that's something you have to be very careful with. Quick pause. The video that you're currently watching is just a fraction of the entire course that I have to offer. So I built this complete Unity Masterclass course in which you are going to learn how to build real games and how to build them from scratch. So you're going to learn how to build a platformer game, how to build a Space Invaders clone, how to build a Fruit Ninjas clone and optimize it for mobile and export it for mobile as well, how to build a first person shooter game, and finally how to build a tycoon game similar to Adventurist, which is an endless game. So if you want to become a real game developer, definitely check out the course. You can find the link in the description and you will get the course with a huge discount. So don't hesitate as you will not only get the course, but you will also get it in a structured manner with all of the code as well as a Q&A section with a five star support. So get the course now. I hope to see you there. All right, so now let's look at components a little more. We can see that our main camera has this transform component, which indicates where the position, rotation and scale of the item is. And then we have the camera component, which basically has a bunch of settings that are relevant for such a camera component. A camera component is something that is defined by Unity, which has defined all of these settings, which allows us to change how this camera is going to behave, how it's going to look like and so forth. All right. And then you have an audio listener that is also added to the main camera. And this is basically two ears that the camera has. So let's say it's the two ears that will then deliver the audio to the earphones of the player or to the speakers of the player. So in order to understand all of these component parts a little better, let's create our own 3D object here. So let's create a sphere. Let's add that to our game. And you can see here we have our sphere. It's called sphere by default. As you see, also we can change the name straight away. So we could change that to, be, for example, player. So now our sphere could be our player. But then if we look at this player, it has very different components or the sphere has very different components than our camera had. So it doesn't have a camera component. It doesn't have an audio controller component, but it has a sphere mesh filter, a mesh renderer, as well as a sphere collider. So we're going to see what all of this means later on. It would be too much for this intro video, but basically you can now see that our player has a certain position and it is some weird position because it was just 
automatically created wherever we were at that point and it thought it would make sense. Using your right mouse button and holding it, you can see you can change the rotation or the view of your, well, the direction in which you can look at the scene. And then you can play around with the WASD keys in order to fly around in this world. Okay, so now you can fly around, fly around and then basically see where everything is in comparison to each other. Now let's actually reset our position of the player. So now it will be in the position of 0, 0, 0. Let's actually add another item. So here, a 3D object, and that will be a plane. Let's position this plane at 0, 0, 0 as well. So I'm going to reset the transform. You can now see that the plane is at the ground level, so to speak, and the player is cut in half because it has a scale of 1, 1, 1. And if we change it now, if we change its position, its Y coordinate to 0 0.5, then it will be exactly on top of the plane because the plane is at 0, 0, 0. And our, our ball's central point is the one that is considered for its position. So the central point of our ball will be half a height up, which means that it will now be exactly on top of our plane on our ground, so to speak. So let's change plane to ground. So now let's look at our game scene and you can see that this is what we're getting. And this is basically the direction or the thing that our main camera can see. So if you go over to your scene and you click on your main camera, you see that these are the, well, these white lines, they indicate the direction in which the camera can see. So the camera has this viewpoint and it looks towards the ball. And if we drag it closer by dragging this blue line here, you can see here in the bottom that it gets closer to the ball. So let's look at it. And now the game view is going to be different. So the game view is basically displaying what the camera can see for us. So here you have the scene view and the game view, and you can play between them. The game view is what the player will see and the scene view is what we see as a developer. So we as a developer can see everything, right? We can play around here, we can fly around. But there's one last thing that I would like to show you, and that is the directional light that we have here. So you can see the directional light goes towards a specific direction here. And this creates the situation where our ball is very white on this side, very shiny, and very dark on this side, and it creates the shadow even. So if we change the direction of our light, our directional light, then we can change where the shadow will be. So let's do that. Let's play around with the rotation here and we can either play around with it in the transform component or we can use one of those tools that we have up here. So the move tool is the one that was selected for us by default. We can also change to the rotate tool, which is this one. And then we can rotate our sun. You can see now, now it gets darker and darker until it's night. So this is what we can play around with to change the shadow and basically from where the sun comes, so where the sun stands and all of that. Okay, even though it is at this exact position, but the light is directional, so it comes basically from this one direction. It, the directional light doesn't care about its position, so it could even be underneath the player. We can test this by going back to the move tool and move it further down. So now it's going to be basically underneath the player but still the shadow is at the same spot. So that has to do, and I'm using control Z in order to return or to undo something. So basically this means that the rotation is what matters for the directional light. Everything else doesn't matter because the light will always come from this direction. You can see there in the background, that's the sun. And that is basically our directional light that helps us out. Or we can control the sun by using our directional lights rotation. Thanks a lot for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Now you're one step closer to becoming a Unity game developer. And if you haven't liked the video yet, please do so now as well as subscribe. And also make sure to follow along in the playlist to become a real Unity developer. And if you want to fast track the whole development process of becoming a developer, then definitely check out our Unity Masterclass in which you're going to build a bunch of games and while doing so, learn everything you need to know about game development 
and well have your first couple of projects under your belt so check it out the link is in the description below you will get a huge discount and i hope to see you in the next video